there are really high cost options versus really low cost options. And that's what we're gonna talk about today in the sense of a sleeping pad. Now I've got a $30 pad here that you can purchase on Amazon. This is from LA Recreation. This is going to be compared next to what I would consider a top of the line pad from Thermarest. This is the Neo Air X Lite. Now what I wanna do at this point is basically focus on the core differences between these two sleeping pads and talk about other options that are available out there on the market of pads that I've used uh, myself and things that you would consider when trying to decide what sleeping pad do I purchase for backpacking? Because this can be a really enticing option at $30, and I'm gonna talk about the differences between how a $30 sleeping pad lays and its comfort versus this pad, and this happens to be my favorite pad available on the market. Again, this is the NeoWare X Lite from Thermarest, and definitely worth the money in my opinion but let's talk about the differences between these two because do you really need to spend this much money? Now, the first thing that we'll talk about is the amount of loft or the height of these pads and how that plays a part in the overall comfort of the pad. This is not a super thick pad, maybe an inch, inch and a half, and the construction of it doesn't allow for a lot of height uh, to be given off of, off of the ground. And that's gonna come into play here in just a minute. Now, if you're looking at the uh, Neo Air, you've got about two and a half inches of total uh, space between your, your back and the ground. And that plays a part into the fact that you have a much higher R value out of this uh, X-Lite than you do out of this uh, LA Recreation. So this NeoWare X Lite has about a 3.2, if I'm not mistaken, but at least a three R value. And this pad alone comes in at 12 ounces, 13 ounces with the uh, stuff sack. So now take into account the fact that this LA Recreation pad, which has more of like a uh, square or a diamond shaped type of baffle system, this pad has an R value of 1.3. If I was only doing summer backpacking, then spending the money for a pad like this at $30 would be a worthy investment in my opinion. So I wanna talk more about this particular shape and what the benefit of it is and how it has its downsides as well. So with this like diamond pattern, you've got these spaces in between each of these larger baffles that allow for air movement to move uh, in between all of the baffles. You've got this welded seam that is uh, in each of these places right here that creates these baffles. And what that allows is for your body to move with the pad. So if I'm rolling onto my side, then the air is going to move uh, with me. But I've noticed that laying on this particular pad, a being a side sleeper is not as comfortable as if I am on the NeoWare and these horizontal baffles on the NeoWare allow for more uh, sleeping positions and comfortable sleeping positions than I have experienced here on this LA Recreation. So if you're a stomach sleeper, back sleeper, then this is a really, really good thing. So $30, you're getting this pad that weighs 14 ounces, just over 14 ounces with the stuff sack. This thing, like I said, 12 ounces, you're paying a way, way, way higher cost for this pad. So things to consider are the fact that, do I need an R value of three? Or am I only doing summer camping, summer backpacking, where the amount of conduction that's happening from the bottom of the pad up to my back is not significant enough to where I'm going to get cold, especially if I am somebody that sleeps uh, with a quilt. So you have to take that into consideration as well when you are choosing a pad uh, for your backpacking system. Climate, for example, the Static V pad is probably one of the most popular lower cost pads available on the market, and it would compete really well with this. It's a different type of baffle construction than what you've got here. This is going to mirror more of what you would see from Sea to Summit. And ever since Sea to Summit came out with their pads, I've seen more of this type of uh, diamond type pattern construction uh, baffle system on a sleeping pad. 
All right, so we'll kick the shoes off at this point. I'm gonna go ahead and dive in onto the pad here. So now that I've crawled into the tent and I'm in the quilt, I'm laying on the LA Recreation pad first, and I've got this thing blown up as tight as I possibly can get it. And one of the things that's important for me to point out already is that, yes, it is comfortable, but the lack of height and loft of the pad itself is one of the glaring negatives about this pad. My butt is currently touching the ground and it's not until I'm fully laid back and I'm spreading my weight all the way out across the pad that I feel that full comfort of being able to spread my weight. So I'm gonna go ahead and lay back here. And it's at this point laying on my back all the way that it is really comfortable and I don't have like any weird pressure points. The baffle system of the pad, those diamond shapes is comfortable. It's balancing my weight. And when I shift around on the pad, it's not, uh, it's not uncomfortable, um, at least in this position. Now, if I lay onto my side, even with the pad as tight as I can possibly get it when I blow it up, it's really easy for me to push and press these baffles into the ground, which means somebody of my weight, 160 pounds or more, is gonna put a lot of pressure on these baffles. And so it's just something to think about when you're, when you're considering a sleeping pad is, how much of the height really matters to me? And right now, I'll explain this as well. It's about 45 degrees outside. So the ground has been pretty cold, it's frozen overnight, and I can absolutely feel the cold from the ground coming up uh, onto my body. So just the fact that I have a quilt or anytime I'm going to be using a uh, sleeping bag, I'm gonna compress that insulation uh, on my back anyway. And so this absolutely, 100% is going to be a fantastic warm weather, hot weather type of sleeping pad. Uh, anything else, it's not going to be sufficient because you are going to be cold. To continue on that same thought process, I'm laying here on my side and I've got my elbow digging into the pad and my elbow is not currently touching uh, the ground, which is a testament to the fact that when you've got a higher loft, a higher uh, height on the pad, you're gonna be more comfortable because there's more area uh, for your body to be able to spread out along this. And the horizontal baffles on this are one of my favorite aspects to this because I don't roll into like a crease or anything. Um, and that's one of my least favorite things about the uh, Sin Mat from Xped. And uh, the Q Core is another one of those pads that has those kinds of uh, vertical baffles as opposed to the horizontal. One of the major downsides to this pad is the fact that you can see how close my body is to the ground. And when I'm laying here, my elbows, this is like the most frustrating thing to me about the pad is when I'm laying on my back, my elbows just touch the ground. And instantly that becomes a uh, point of discomfort and it's really, really frustrating for me. So that is the major negative of going with an ultralight pad like this because they have done everything they possibly can to trim down the weight and make this thing comfortable, but also trim down as much fabric as, as possible so that um, it's as light as it possibly can be. Laying on the side, really, really nice and Again, because this has that full horizontal baffle, you don't have anything that is uh, welded together on the seams to make uh, it come together of the two pieces. I'm not even close uh, to touching the ground. And again, about 45 degrees out here today, the ground is cold, it's wet, and I am not experiencing the cold that I was feeling uh, from the LA Recreation uh, coming up through. So again, 1.3 R value versus a uh, 3.2 uh, 
I believe, uh, for this particular pad. Now let's answer the question of, I don't own a sleeping pad, and these are my two options, which of them do I purchase? It's gonna come down to a couple different factors. What's your budget? What type of uh, backpacking are you going to be doing and what season are you going to be doing it in? And the last being, what type of sleeper are you? Because the overall comfort of this pad is going to be determined on uh, what type of sleeping uh, you do personally. If you are a side sleeper, I'm all day, every day, gonna go with the NeoAir x Lite. If I am somebody that sleeps solely on my back or my stomach, then the LA Recreation is going to be a really good option. If my budget only allows for about $50 to be spent, then the LA Recreation is an obvious, obvious choice because $30 for this, and this is a very expensive pad. It's $160 for uh, the NeoAir x Lite. If I was to say which one is a better pad, personally, from my uh, experience and overall use of the two pads, I would purchase the NeoAir x Lite every day. And I would take this over the LA Recreation anytime I had the option to. But I will say that for a $30 price point, this thing is seriously really, really cool. And the fact that and the fact that you can get a comfortable and really lightweight option for such a low cost, I definitely think it is worth worth looking at if your budget is at that price point where you can't spend uh, a lot of money. That is the comparison between the LA Recreation $30 pad that you can get on Amazon versus the NeoAir X Lite. I appreciate you guys watching. Please share this video on any type of social media platform. Uh, share it with your friends. Hit that thumbs up button as well as hit that subscribe button so that you can see more videos like this uh, in the future. And as always, have an awesome day.